I recently did a chickadee class. And the, the rules, the average rules for a songbird are per inch length of bird. You need a one millimeter eye per inch of length of bird. And a chickadee is a four and a half inch long bird on average from what I've found out by looking at study skins. So I looked and they don't make four and a half millimeter eyes. They don't exist. There's three, four, five, six, they're all in equal sizes. When we, when we did the class, um, I use four millimeter eyes, and, and I thought they were a little bit too small. So my buddy, I talked to my buddy in Montana, and he's the one that's the guru of bird carving. And he said, make your own eyes. He said, I just started doing it. And I said, that sounds cool. So, so what we're doing, we're making eyes. You, you buy, I went to Lowe's. And I bought every size doll they sold. I have every single one. And it's, it was a whole $5 investment is what it cost. You know, you start out to real small sizes, they're 70 cents, and they go up to a dollar or something like that. So what I did is I found a piece of doll, and this doll is four and a half millimeters, which, which is, I'm not sure what size that is in standard. That's just a little over um, three sixteenths. Yeah, it's a three sixteenths doll. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> first thing you want to do, say if I want a four and a half millimeter eye, I'll take the dowel and I'll carve it or get one that's really close to four and a half millimeters, which is what this is. So then I took a piece of um, plexiglass. You know, this is from the hardware store just junk cutoffs that they have, you know, and they'll usually give them to you. My hardware store gave me a pile of this stuff. And this, this is a little thicker stuff here. This here is like 3 16 plexiglass, and I would use this plexiglass to make a larger eye, you know, something like this eye, you know, because a larger eye, you want, want more dome in it. So the bigger you go, the little thicker of plexiglass you'd need. But for the chickadee, I just got some eighth inch plexiglass chunks. And I cut off a chunk on my bandsaw, just a, just a little square piece. And when you cut it on the bandsaw, you cut it one way, and you cut it the other way, but not all the way. Because if you cut it all the way, it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> so you cut it all but a little nub. And that little nub is on there, and then you can just break it off. And then it doesn't fly in your eye. So then you take it's just gel super glue, you know, from the dollar store. But you got to use the gel stuff, not the regular non-gel super glue. Little dot of gel super glue on the end of the dowel. And then you adhere your piece of plexiglass to that. And then I let it sit for about an hour or two just to really get hard on there. I tried one after a few minutes and <laughs> just kind of went away. So now that we know that this stick is the diameter of eye we want, you'll just take a cutter. And this here is from Keldon. It's those double cut steel cutters. You know the ones, Brian, the ones you can't use. <laughs> but they do only cut one way. They only cut in forward. They don't cut in reverse. So for lefties, this is kind of difficult. <laughs> but oh well. I'm a righty, so it don't matter. So anyway, you'll take this cutter. And now I'm going to run my dust collector. Because this stuff, you know, the super glue, when you car power carve it, it makes actually a bad gas. You're not supposed to breathe this stuff. So if you're going to, but see, I didn't totally coat this in so much glue it was running down it. There's just a little dot holding this piece of plexiglass on here. It's, there's not a ton of it on there. So what I'll do, I'll turn on my dust collector. And it just takes a few minutes, a minute. Oh, better get my eyes on. There we go. And I'll just carve this. You know, I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the larger one. 
just so you can see it easier. This is the one that's a little bigger. This one will probably be, let me check that. Now this is like seven and a half millimeters, so that's for a seven and a half inch bird. <laughs> so I will carve this one to the shape I want, to, to the diameter of the stick that's holding it. And see how, see how nice that carves? I mean, it carves really nice with these cutters. These things are great. And you just keep working it till it looks round. Now, these don't have to be perfectly round. Because when you set these eyes in whatever project you're doing, you're not going to see the edge of it. It's going to be hidden inside the bird or fish or wherever these eyes are going. So if it's a little off, it doesn't matter. You know, you just, just get it reasonably close. So I carved it right now so it's even with that stick. So it's reasonably round right now. That's pretty good. Okay, so now I'll just start rounding it over you know how an eye is, how it's kind of rounded over there. This doesn't take long. This is really fun. So I just keep turning it as I'm carving. And this is one of the bits Keldon has right on 50 forts, right around the corner. Right, see, they moved a little south of here, about a mile. But those of you that are power carvers, you know of Keldon, they have all these bits and things. And this is where I get most of my bits from, is Keldon. Pardon me? Oh, is that where they're at now? Yeah, what's well, about a mile and a half south of where they were? Yeah. And they're really, they're great people there. They're just nice. Okay. That's reasonably round. For this size eye, it's a little too tall. I'll just carve it down a little. For the sake of speeding up the demo, I'm not going to get it really good. I'll just get it decent. Now that's a pretty, that's pretty round, and it's the millimeter I want because it's the same diameter as the stick. You know, and like, if I was going to do a different eye and I wanted it a millimeter smaller, I'll just carve the stick down first. Round it, turn it around. I mean, you can do this on a belt sander and just turn it. You know, you could do it any way you want. So if I wanted a seven millimeter eye, I would carve this down. Get that as close to seven millimeters as I can. Glue the piece of plexiglass on there. And then carve it, the plexiglass to the size of the doll you glued it on. So that's going to help you keep the size I you want. This would be a good reference point for you. OK. So that's not bad. So now that, me, now that the eye is say it's reasonably shaped how I want it. I got these felt pads from Keldon, these little felt discs. I think these were quarter by quarter. And weren't they a dollar? Yeah, they were cheap. And they're real hard felt. And they use these for um, 
tool and die making, you know, for molds and things. They polish the corners of uh, dies for big factories. So, got the felt disc or cylinder. I guess that'd be a cylinder. It's a quarter by quarter. And you take some ZAM or any polishing compound would probably work. You know, this is just that wax with um, grit in, impregnated in it. You take the ZAM or whatever you have, load up the felt pad. You can see it's green on there, so it's loaded pretty good. And what, what I'm doing is I'm polishing all the scratches on it that I made with this cutter. You know, this cutter, it's a steel cutter, so it's going to leave scratches on there. And I tried sanding it once, and it just doesn't work. This little felt deal and the polishing compound works great. And I'll just do it quick here. So I'm polishing it just to get all the scratches off. And that is starting to look pretty good. And you do have to be careful. I just dug a hole in the eye. <laughs> These things do cut <laughs> when you get that ZAM on there. You'll get the feel for it. It took me a while. I made about four or five eyes before I got the hang of it. Okay. It's kind of nasty looking. I'm running a little too fast too. You got to be careful that you don't run it too fast because this is plastic and it'll melt. So turn that down a little bit. Okay. That's better. Yeah, I fiddled around with this to get a nice surface on this eye for about 15 minutes at home. So I'm going to stop here and I'll call that good enough. Okay, so once you get it polished up pretty nice, then you take a carving knife. And I cut where the eye met the wood. I put it on a table and I just kept rolling it until it shoots across the room. <laughs> <laughs> then you carve another one. We'll see if I can catch this one. There she goes. Oh, yeah, because they're clear. Yeah, exactly. Now, at home, my wife, she has a called a ring clamp for jewelry. And the Keldon has those, and they're probably, what, $20? And they're steel. They're really nice. But everyone probably has one of these little squeegee clamps, you know, these quick clamps. I think they're, what, $4 at Menards. Or, but this works, too. We were messing around with it. and. Because what you're going to want to do, see now I can hold that pretty well. Because it's kind of hard to hold an object that's shaped like that. But this clamp does a good job of that. So I pushed it tight against the table with the eye flat and laying down, and I just squeezed it pretty good. So now that'll hold it reasonably well. And then what I did is I took a dental pick. And I scraped off some of the super glue because I don't want to carve that super glue. You just don't want to do it. I tried to get it off of there. But most of the super glue, it seems, stays on the dowel because it's porous. You know, so it seemed to me like most of the glue stayed on the dowel. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that I got that nice and clean. And then I take the same felt cylinder here, and you polish this side of the eye, it 
and that's all it took. It's actually pretty nice. So now, now I have my shape. I have the back polished pretty good. The front looks terrible, but <laughs> we're going to call it good for the sake of this demonstration. And then what we did, we took these, um, we got these at, um, was it Hobby Lobby? And these like are, what do they call these, little, in the train section? They call them micro brushes? And these things are great. They're like plastic, but there's some kind of a brush end adhered to them, and they're just perfect for this job. Because if you're trying to make a pupil on something like this with a brush, the hairs of the brush are going to go all over the place, and you're never going to get it right. There's no way. So I'm going to take some black paint and show you how I made a, the pupil of this. Now, that's enough for 400 eyes right there. <laughs> And it depends now. There's, there's, was it super fine and fine we bought? And I think there might have been a medium too. So we just bought the two smallest ones. So for this size eye, I'll probably use, well, you know, I use the little bigger one so I don't have to clean it. So you take this bigger brush, put some paint on there. Put a dot right in the middle. And that actually doesn't look too bad. But you can, what you can do with these is you just push straight down and you can work it around, but keep in contact with the eye and you get a nice round shape that way. It's when you start moving your hand and pulling it up and you get little, little doodads going off to the side there. That's actually not too bad. So that's how I put the pupil in. I'll clean that off quick. So now I'm going to dry this, just with the hair dryer to make it quick. There, that's pretty good. Now before I tried making an eye, I tried painting it first when I had the little square, but when you glued it to your stick, it was hard to center the pupil, and I had it painted real nice, and when I took it off the stick, all the paint stayed on the stick. <laughs> so I've done it that way, and it does not work. You have to glue it to the stick first before you do anything, and this was easy. Okay, so now what I'm taking is like, uh, let's see, we'll go with the copper bronze. I took some of this, say this is a chickadee eye, which black pupil and then brown around it, but I'll take some of this metallic, which is really cool stuff. You know, this is for fish, fish carvers. It has little flakes in there, so when you hold it off to light, it'll glitter and stuff. So I'll take little bits of this metallic, and then I took some burnt sienna because this metallic it's there's not a lot of pigment in it though so it really doesn't cover you know so I took a little bit of a brown color burnt sienna you can use burnt umber it don't matter this is a little redder burnt sienna and I took a whole bunch of the metallic and just a nub of this burnt sienna and mixed it together And so what I got is metallic paint with a little more pigment in it. And then I just put dots of that around. And you can take, I don't know, what is this one? This is iridescence red. Let's throw a little bit on there and see what that does. You can play with this. This is fun. Put a little bit of iridescence red on there. Clean this off. And then I'll mix that with a little bit of the mix I have already of the other two colors.
Let's give it a nice color. And I'll dry that with the hair dryer before I do too much more. <laughs> but whatever eyes you're making, if you're making yellow eyes, you know, this works good for any color eyes you want. This is really cool. I'm painting on the part that was attached to the doll, on the flat part. So it's underneath. Nope. So when, you, when the eye is properly polished and you do all this stuff, you turn it over and you have a really nice eye. This one's not polished very good. <laughs> but uh, So anyway, what I'll do now is I'll probably just put some, because it's a darker eye, I'll just take some straight burnt sienna after I laid down a few of these colors, and I'll put that over the, over the back. I'll put a coat of that on. But you can play around with this. You can do anything you want on these. See what that does. See, that gave it, it's really neat. It gave it a really nice color. So now that's, that's some burnt sienna. But if you're doing an eye like these other ones I made, these are yellow. So I just took some acrylic yellow, and it was a little too bright, so I mixed in some burnt sienna with it. Or, you know, you can play with the colors. But what's neat is when you have it on this clamp, you can turn it over, you can keep looking at it. You know, if you don't like it, and if you don't like how it looks, take this dental pick, you scrape it off. It takes a second, and you just start over. You know, you don't have to carve another eye, because this is plastic on plastic, it will scrape right off. And you can take some little water, wash it off, and just do it another color. So, and then what I'll do, like, if I'm doing a yellow eye, to get a nice yellow, I put white on the back, you know, because that color accentuates the yellow coming through. You know, but on a darker eye like this, I'll probably put, a, like, black on the back, maybe. So I'll just take a little bit more black and put it on there. And that'll deepen the color a little bit. Yep, that deepened it a ton. But if I wanted to lighten it a little more, I would probably put some white gesso or white paint. You know, you can play around with this. It's really fun. And that's about Eyes 101. <laughs> that's kind of it. I mean, there's not much to it. There's not much to invest. Pardon? <laughs> uh, one's good enough. It's a cyclops bird. <laughs> so, but, you know, see, when you buy the eyes done, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is an eye done, a yellow one that you would put in a bird that requires yellow eyes. And this is the eye I made. It's like a zillion times better. And it's fun. <laughs> this is fun. It's cheap. This stuff, the hardware store gave this stuff to me. They, you know, what are they going to do with that? Make a window? <laughs> you know, so they gave me this stuff, and there's enough for a lot of eyes right there. <laughs> you know, and doll, five dollars in dolls, some super glue, and a few bucks in these liner brushes, and everyone has acrylic paints laying around. You know, there's not much to this, and then all you need to do is get these little buffing deals. These work well. You know, and whoever does power carving probably has these steel cutters, you know, and these work real well. I tried it with a diamond bit, and diamonds just don't work because these steel cutters, it's steel. It'll actually carve it off where diamond's abrasive. It's like a grit. Sandpaper and diamonds just don't work to do this. You have to have these steel cutters. I tried all that stuff. And sandpaper doesn't work well. It puts too many scratches in it to buff out. These steel cutters work well. So that's it. I did that Iowa two bits. You know, and this is what? Four, five dollars a Keldon's four, and this is a dollar. And so it's a cheap proposition, and I'll probably never buy an eye again. I'll just make my own. Then I can get them exactly how I want them. So, any questions? Yep, those are the double cuts. Yeah, that's a good, good one. Yep. You do have to use the double cuts. Yeah, they had a dead tons of sizes there. Yeah, it's carbide rotary files are what they are. Is that what? I'm sure that's carbide. 
I would imagine, yeah, for tool and die industry is what they're used for. One of our carter sold them a few years ago. He had moldables of them. You could get another 15 for $10. Oh, is that right? I kind of remember that. Anybody else? Or you can put that body in the burner shop and it came over. I think this guy's going in the garbage. <laughs> this was not a good eye. <laughs> oh, oh, th yeah, that's a good, good point there. Um, what I do is when you set the eyes, you know, I just did a class, and we use this stuff called apoxy. Um, <laughs> oh. Here, can I throw this at you? <laughs> I tried the black on my bird just to see because chickadees have black eyebrows and it did not work. <laughs> you have to use the natural. Don't even fall for their seven other colors they have. Just buy the natural. But what you do is when you're, after you get your eye inserted in your bird and you get the lid all done, everybody in my class, I had them take a little bit of this apoxy stuff. It was the um, B part. And we just dabbed it on the eye and it left enough film on there. So when you painted the bird, it came right off. You know, that kind of protects the eye. So that's kind of a good, and this apoxy, one of these, it's the A. Eventually, after two years, it's like a rock. It's garbage. But this stuff never hardens. So I keep it for putting over the eyes for putting the film on there for when we paint the bird. And it scrapes right off at the dental pit then. So you can paint right over it, and it comes right off. So. That works good. It depends on the size of the eye. Usually, if probably if something's under, say, a six millimeter, I would use the A. And anything bigger than that, I would start thinking about the three sixteenths. You know, it just depends on the diameter of the eye on how thick a plastic you're going to use. And once you play with it, you'll see. You know, it's pretty obvious. And you could even buy. I mean, you could buy four different eyes from a catalog that are just junk ones just to see the shape of them and just lay them out and say, okay, I want a six, but I don't like the way that looks. So you can carve the eye shape and then paint it what you want on the backside, you know, because you can get them on catalogs. You can get them for a dollar a pair, you know, just garbage ones, but it'll just get you the shape. It's the color you're interested in that's showing through them. But like I said, I'll never buy an eye again. I'll carve them. And you can use these in anything you carve. It doesn't have to be birds. So it can work in anything. Anybody else? No? I think that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>